In this module, we will walk you through the execution second settings that you must accomplish before running the Torus script. The execution object typically represents the underlying tool executions. You can launch uh, unlimited numbers of uh, JMeters or Gatling tools or Grinder tool scripts. Executions are configured under the top level configuration key execution. Uh, specifying single execution configuration may be done using either a dictionary or a list. Um, however, if you do intend to define more than one execution scenarios or more than one executions, then it's recommended to use a list instead. If you see the first example, the first example on the screen is using a dictionary for the execution settings by making a key value pair for scenario. Whereas the second one is actually using the symbol dash, which, which actually means it's building a list uh, of elements for multiple executions. Uh, let's see an example on this. Now, if you see this example script uh, for execution, uh, I'm using uh, three dashes to uh, represent the start of the document. And then under execution, um, if you see, I have used a single dash to represent list of elements. And uh, I have defined all the execution attributes, execution settings under this list as one single execution. The execution has several options to set the load profile settings. Support for options is specific to the executor type that you use. Some of the available settings include concurrency, which is uh, the number of target concurrent virtual users you want to run the load test with. The ramp up time, which is the time it uh, the system will take or the script will take to reach the target concurrency. And hold for is the time to hold the target concurrency once it has uh, uh, reached the maximum concurrency defined. The iterations basically limit the scenario iterations number, which is how many loops uh, of the test iterations will be run when the script runs for a specific period of hold time. When uh, both hold for and iteration settings is defined, the first one to finish will end the script. Uh, basically, what that means is that if I have a hold for uh, set to five minutes and the iteration is set to one, and if the script takes about a minute to complete, then the script will be terminated at the end of one iteration, even though the hold for was set to five minutes. Uh, this typically tends to be a little confusing, so only one of the two is usually set. Um, if you do not set the iterations, it will default to infinity and the test script will run until the hold for time is reached. Right, uh, if you look at the script uh, that has been defined below, you can see that there is no iteration. Uh, the iteration is in fact set to 1000 and the hold for is set to uh, two minutes. Now, depending upon the time it will take to run the script, um, the uh, system will basically uh, run it for only about two minutes, irrespective of whether the iterations of 1000 are met or not met. Uh, throughput basically uh, is the RPS shaper, so it allows you to limit the maximum hits per second. Uh, throughput will be limited by the actual response time of the script. Uh, if, you th if you take an example and let's say that the script takes about one second, uh, one second to respond, then you will only be able to run uh, one hit per second in terms of the throughput, even though if your throughput is defined to, uh, let's say, 20 in your configuration settings. Um, because of the nature of the script and the response time uh, of the script, the script will only be able to run one hit per second. We also have a further. We, we also have a few more properties like steps, which allow the users to apply step up ramp up for uh, concurrency, and it needs the JMeter plugins to be installed. And you can also define a scenario, of course, uh, which is just the name of the scenario, the detail of which we provided in the scenarios part of your configuration settings.
Now your scenario is a sequence of steps that's going to be used to build the script for an underlying tool that the Taurus is actually wrapping. For example, if you would like to generate a GMX file for JMeter. There are three ways of running the scenario or defining the scenario. Now your scenario could either point to an existing script or it can also create a load test script using the Taurus um, configuration. If you see the example on the screen, we've got two scenarios. The first one is the get request scenario and the second one is only script. For the first scenario, the request will be made from within the Taurus script on the basis of the execution settings defined. If you see the only script option, it will call an existing script, but you can still provide any configuration settings if you would like to. Uh, for example, if I want, I could have an existing JMeter script and I can use Taurus as an automation wrapper by simply calling that script from within the Taurus script and overriding any of the JMeter configurations if I would like to. There is, however, a third way to also call out to a scenario, and this is probably the shortest of all of them, where you simply give the name of the script that should be executed directly into the scenario dictionary uh, or the scenario key value pair. You can, even if you use this, this, this way of defining a scenario, you can still use the execution settings and override any of the defaults that exist in the script. Thank you.